Hey there, welcome to your Lion's Gate portal reading for August 8th of 2021. And it can be any um, Lion's Gate that you come across in your um, life. It doesn't have to be the one for 2021 if you happen to come across this outside that time frame. Because as always, the Creator and Spirit are not bound by time and space. And so the, if you're drawn to this message, then there are messages for you. Um, but if you are coming across this um, on August 8th of 2021, then the portal for the Lion's Gate this year um, kind of opened up around July 28th, depending on where you're at in the world, and is going to close around August 12th. Now, the August 8th is when the portal is the widest open and when like the activation and the energy is just so strong. That's where, um, you know, this portal increases the cosmic energy that's flowing between the physical world and the spiritual realm. So it just really opens up this portal where it's like um, the veil is very thin and we can communicate um, between those. And then amongst all that, also, there's uh, the new moon in Leo is at its height today as well um, at 7.50 a.m. Mountain Time. So depending on where you're at and all that. I do do a special reading for the new moon in Leo. So that'll be um, linked at the end of this video here if you want to check that out as well. It'll be under the moon, new moon, full moon um, readings. Um, so um, if you want to check that out, just um, jump on over there after this one. So what is the Lion's Gate? And I love these cards here by the White Light Oracle because um, it just really um, shows this beautiful, beautiful lion. Um, and we'll talk about Ishtar's Lion Gate 888 here in a second as well. But what is the Lion's Gate? Um, there's this special cosmic alignment when the sun happens to be in the sign of Leo and the star Sirius rises um, into this special trajectory with the Earth. And um, in looking at the Lion's Gate, um, it, uh, some information was talking about in ancient times, Sirius, um, the star, would match up with like the Great Pyramids. And it would do it on July 26th. And that is what Egyptian considered their new year. Of course, um, over the thousands of years, our systems kind of change a little bit. So those exact dates have altered a little bit. But with the sun in Leo, which is the ruler of the heart, and then Sirius, the star, bringing in all that extra energy, the veil is thin, so we can have a heightened connection um, with all the higher realms. Now, the um, symbols of the gate, the lion, and also the eight-pointed star, which, you know, eight is, um, of course, August, um, all of that also points towards ancient references to a woman priestess who is named Ishtar, which is all this about this Ishtar Lion's Gate. And she's considered uh, like the goddess of the planet Venus, so like Leo's in charge of the heart. The goddess, um, you know, Ishtar is of the planet Venus, which is about love. Um, but she also had this um, sacred relationship with the star Sirius. And I mention all that because she's the queen of letting go and she holds the keys to renewal from suffering. So it's kind of like the Phoenix in a way where, you know, from the ashes we rise up um, and renew things in our lives. Um, and I loved when I was reading in this um, particular deck, it says she is relentless in her pursuit of the path to true inner freedom. So the energy of Ishtar and the Lionsgate portal gives us support in surrendering our attachments, letting go of identities like mother, wife, boss, you know, brother, boyfriend, whatever it might be. And it draws us to spending time to ourself, focusing on the higher realm and our higher self that we are. So this reading that we're about to do is going to be part one of two parts, actually. So this reading is going to be about what you're ready to surrender or you're getting ready to surrender. And then part two is going to be coming in September. I'm going to be doing some autumn equinox readings, which will focus on what's 
falling away to make room for the new, you know, fall, autumn. So I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So what's falling away to make room for the new? So to make sure you don't miss out on any of those, if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button down below and make sure to hit that little bell icon and you'll get an alert when those are posted. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to jump in to the reading now. All right, my Geminis. So this is gonna be your reading for the Lionsgate portal. And what we're gonna start off with are these beautiful cards. They're the Power of Surrender cards, which perfect for the kind of the theme of the reading is what you're ready to surrender or you're getting ready to surrender to or what the creator wants you to know about what you're getting ready to surrender. So we'll start off by pulling a card from this deck and then we'll pick some other cards here just to see how this ripples out um, into your future because this is the energy that's kind of coming to you um, through the portal on August 8th and then um, it of course will spark and um, cause this ripple of events and changes and wonderful things um, in your life as well. So let's see creator what do you want our Geminis to know about what they're getting ready to surrender. Okay. I did get this card. <clears throat> so surrender obsessive thinking. And of course, as soon as I see those, I think of Sleeping Beauty, right? With the, the uh, nice old woman offering the delicious red apple that puts you to sleep. Um, and it says, if you're obsessing about a person or situation, Turn the dilemma over to spirit. Doing so will help bring you clarity or even solve the problem. So yeah, definitely this is about just the energy that you're coming in with here. You're just ready to let this situation or this person or this relationship or this job or this home or whatever it might be, um, you're ready to surrender that and let it go. You're ready to give it over to spirit and go, you know what? Your will be done, not mine. And um, I'm tired of chasing after this thing, thinking that I have to have it. And I'm, you know, getting so consumed by it that I'm losing sleep, that, you know, I'm, I'm losing energy and my health and mental state <laughs> and emotional state. You're just like, I'm done. I'm ready to surrender. I um, mean, it's this wonderful thing, you know, um, and um, the other thing that this apple is um, bringing a message of, you know, it's this apple a day helps keep your obsession away. It's reminding yourself every day um, about releasing that. So having some sort of alarm or message or something hanging somewhere that brings you back out of that. Because in the beginning, it might be difficult. If it's an obsession, um, usually you don't just turn it off like that, right? It's like you um, do very good like through half of the day and you go to sleep going, finally I've released the obsession. You wake up thinking about the situation or the person or whatever and you're obsessed again until you remember again, right? Until the new habit is not being obsessed because the habit you formed is about being obsessed for that thing in the external world that you're searching after. Um, we're going to pull some more cards regarding the situation here from these. It's the Naked Heart Tarot, um, and I love the designs on here. Um, and let's see what else the creator wants you to know about this. Surrendering to the obsessive thinking, because it's all happening in our head, right? All this world that we're seeing, we're seeing the world as we are, not as the world is. We see through all of our conditioning and our filters that we've grown up with and um, our, our current state of mind. So if I'm at chaos in my mind, I see chaos in the world. If I'm at peace in my mind, I see a peaceful world. So it's a wonderful thing because that's within our power, right? We are the ones that can transform our thinking and thus our feelings and our choices in life. Um, we just come to that place of realization that we are the ones that are creating it. So let's see what else the creator wants you to know, Gemini. Just about this surrendering to obsessive thinking. Okay. 
All right, well, we're going to use these first because they have um, come to um, show themselves first. So you've got the Innocence of Wands, which is normally like the Page of Wands. Um, wands, for me, also represent spiritual energy. So, um, you know, pages in the past were individuals who would hear ye, hear ye, and, um, you know, give messages. So um, I really feel that you, if you haven't been getting messages from spirit, um, or hearing them anyway, because you're always getting messages from the other side, but this is about you hearing messages from the other side and taking time to listen, sit before the, you know, this beautiful connection to the other side. It's like this is the antenna and this is the boom, boom, you know, it's like the radar, um, the um, frequency coming in. And it's really about taking time um, to yourself, away from all the noise, from all the obsession, from all that thinking. Um, even get out into nature um, so that you can get quiet and just really raise your vibration from one of fear and lack and this obsessiveness into peace, unconditional love for yourself, um, joy and laughter. And then that's the frequency at which you can hear spirit because they do have messages and guidance for you to help you through this situation. Um, I really feel for you um, during this time, you're just not wanting to hear from other people, other people's opinions. And this is a general reading, so there's a bunch of different reasons why, you know, one of the ones that comes immediately to the forefront is like, you know, mind your own business, look at your own life first, because you see people that are giving you opinions about your life in this situation and go, you have no place to give me, you know, go sweep in front of your own door first before you come over to mine. I um, mean, it has this feeling. That's why spirit um, and all this beautiful beings of unconditional love and light that you have available to you on the other side you welcome that because you realize, okay, they're coming from a place of unconditional love for me. They're giving me information for me. They're not trying to manipulate me or um, don't have my highest uh, well-being in mind. You know that they are the ones you can trust because they're of unconditional love and light. Um, and so these are the messages. And, and I say that too because um, you've got the hanged man here, which is about seeing things from a higher perspective. It's about, you know, the best nut on the ground looking at it. You're up above. And so this connection that you have <clears throat> is allowing you to, you know, move into this place where you get to see things clearly, you know, see all this insight that's coming in a kind of... <laughs> It's like loading, loading, loading. It's like one of those little um, status bars when you're loading something on your phone. It's like, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And so it's taking some time for you to see it all, and that's okay. The other thing with the Innocence of Wands, the Page of Wands, is the page is also representing like a young child. Um, and wands also represent like your, your drive, your ambition, your spark, you know, like... Um, when you wake up in the morning, um, instead of going, oh God, I got to wake up, you wake up and like, all right, what's this new adventure hold for today? And that page of wands is that, that energy that you kind of feel when you see like two or three year olds running around like for hours on end and you, you <laughs> find yourself saying, if I could just bottle that energy, please. And this is that energy that returns to you. And the reason it returns to you is you as you release and surrender this obsessive thinking, all that energy that you're investing in that thing, trying to get it, when you just stop and pause, and like I said, st take a step away from everything and see things from a different perspective, all that energy that you're investing into that black hole <laughs> comes back to you and you do have this new spark of this new energy where you just feel like that little, I just have so much energy, I just can't use it all up. Yep, and here you go. So here's the magician. The magician is you have everything you need. You've got the pentacles and the wands and the swords and the cups. So you've got all the suits available to you. You have all the capacity for your life, for what you need. You don't have to look outside yourself. And I love the way they um, 
represent this here. I know it's a little creepy at first, but when you look at it and go, this is your eye, and whatever you focus on is what grows and expands. And so this is about that energy. Um, we were talking about like when you're obsessing about something or someone, you're focusing all that energy and it's all going to that situation. When you choose to take a step back and that energy fills you up again, then you get to really determine what it is truly that you want. What are you truly quenching? What are you truly thirsting for and hungering for, right? Um, and then when you focus on that, that energy moves into that part of your life instead. So a beautiful awareness um, there for you and uh, definitely, um, you know, magicians all about manifesting and the focusing of your energies on there. Um, we're going to pull a card here as well from the power deck. These are called the cards of wisdom and we're going to see how this energy that's coming in with this um, surrendering and moving away from the obsessive thinking, how it ripples into your life. What the creator wants you to know about the ripple, the ripple effect. So let's take a look here. I heard what you want nice to know about this energy's impact on their lives. What does it start? Where does it go? What do you want them to know? Gemini's. Okay. <clears throat> you got this peaceful picture here, and this is Essence, is the name of it, card number 38. I'll let you see that and then I'll read that to you. <clears throat> so it says, life is like school. We move through it learning many things, cloaking ourselves in environmental knowledge. So you are on the warrior's path towards enlightenment. You must one day peel away accumulated knowledge like layers of an onion and move back into the source of your power. When contemplating a Zen garden, which is that's what that is, this is a Zen garden, you find that the source of your power is the essence of the great spirit. We come onto this earth walk like a giant piece of smashed mirror, every one of us reflecting the light of our God. The experience of life is a process of piecing together these scrabbled fragments into one great mandala, reflecting the one source of all being. Like the center of a cyclone, we sit at the point of stillness, the pandemonium of life circling madly around us. Choose equilibrium, not frenzy. Live life from your center. The essence of you and the essence of the primal moving force of the universe are one. And beautiful. So the what I'm picking up from this for your regarding this obsessive thinking is two things. One is that, you know, when I was talking about you discover what you're quenching for, what you're thirsting after, what you're hungering for. <clears throat> when we the storm is talking about in here is this chaos we feel when we're trying to fulfill ourselves and define ourselves by the external world. So, you know, being with a particular person, um, having a particular job, being a certain social status, some sort of circumstance, or owning something like owning a house or a vehicle, or looking a certain way, you know, something, something in the physical realm. And we're taught to define ourselves by all those and we, we hunger, we're hungry and we're thirsty and we think all these things are going to fulfill us, but they end up disappointing us because it's unstable and it's not forever. They're all temporary. And so we're hungry again and we're thirsty again very quickly. You know, people's opinions of us change like the weather, right? Um, or people pass away. So that is unstable situations never stay the same of course and things break deteriorate burn down or are stolen so all of that is unstable and that's what makes us feel out of control and in chaos because we're trying to fulfill ourselves and as this card says you come back to center you come back to what really quenches your thirst and that is your connection to the higher realm your connection to who you really are which is a powerful supernatural, eternal spirit being made of unconditional love, not conditional love, 
unconditional love. And that's that whole, you know, group of beings on the other side, um, all, you know, all those beings of unconditional love and light. That is the connection. That's where we feel the love from, that unconditional love from the Creator, from Spirit, all through all those beings, um, down to us. And that's what quenches our thirst. <clears throat> and I love the analogy of coming to the eye of the storm, right? <laughs> In fact, I was going to mention that because like, this is like coming to the eye of the storm. You know, you've got all these boundaries and you're safe and you feel peace and quiet in the eye of the storm. So it's definitely about coming back to the eye <clears throat> because within that, you can be at peace and be looking into the outside and watching the storm go around you while you remain um, not impacted by it. In fact, when a, like a giant hurricane, when you see the eye, you can almost see the sun shining down through the eye and there's hardly any wind um, and it's kind of like this calm, very calming place, right? And there's nothing wrong with being out in the storm. That's why we come here to experience the storm so we can understand what peace feels like. We come here to under, understand conditional love so um, or experience conditional love so we can understand unconditional love because on the other side that's all we have we don't know any different until we experience our opposite or you know experience you know a shadow um, of of that i'm um, also going to pull some additional cards here and see what else the creator would like you to know about this essence I know it's funny, you know, obsession is, you know, was a very popular, probably still is a very popular cologne. Um, and, and essence is like a, you know, like a perfume. So it's like, what, um, what is the, um, what are you wanting to smell in life? You know, do you want to um, have the sweet smelling or the bitter, you know, the bitter, uh, smoky, um, you know, smell or the beautiful smell? <laughs> I don't know why that came out, but there you go. <clears throat> All right, Creator, what else do you want Gemini's to know about this essence, about obsessive thinking, surrendering to that? Anything else? Okay. <clears throat> yep, so you got the three of swords here. For me, this is expectations. The swords are your thoughts, your mindsets, your mentality, your attitudes. Um, and this represents, you know, the feelings we have when our expectations are not met. We, you know, we have this prick in our heart of fear, which feels like heartbreak, um, but it's disappointment, right? Um, and so this card comes up just to um, allow us to see that w what frees us, what, you know, what frees us from, you know, this obsession is releasing the expectations around the situation, especially. So an example would be, if I have a belief that I need to be with that special one, whoever that might be, we might even know who that is, we just, it's this character in our head, that special one is gonna make me feel whole and complete, then you're obsessed with dating, with finding someone, with being with someone. And as I did for quite a while, um, I was a serial monogamist. I would be in a relationship, didn't work out, be in a relationship within weeks after the other one. And then again, and then again, and then again, as it ended, I got into another one, and it got into another one. And it was, I was very surprised when I found out that's called serial monogamy, almost like a serial killer, right? Because I used to kill relationships <laughs> left and right, it seemed, but I was a serial monogamist and I would go from, you know, one to another. <clears throat> and because I had that expectation that I was supposed to be with someone, I should be with someone, I need to be with someone, you know, that's where that obsession comes is I have, I need it. But when we really connect to our higher self in that love and we find that love we're searching for on the inside, then we can see and question these expectations we have and go, is that really, do I, is that really true? Do I really need that? It's causing me a lot of anxiety, but let me just question, let me, you know, like step out 
from the situation into the I and just really look at it and go, you know what? I don't. You know, I find all the love I need within me and I can definitely still have relationships. It's just going to be extra above and beyond. I'm not obsessed about it. I don't feel like I need it. It becomes like, oh yeah, I want a relationship because it's entertaining. It's adventurous. It's fun. I enjoy the company, da, da, da. But it's not a, I need it to live. You know, it's the air I breathe. It's like, no, it's a helium balloon that I inhale <clears throat> to change my voice every once in a while. It's not the air I breathe. <clears throat> Yep, and they have the Eight of Cups, which this is totally about. Um, cups are emotions, and it's about what you're ready to leave behind. All these cups were full. It's all these things in the outside world that we um, filled the cups, but it didn't fulfill us. And so the bear is walking away looking for something more because what you've experienced in the past no longer serves you. And that's definitely what we were just talking about, right? All those things, all these expectations. Um, no longer serve you. <clears throat> and this is a beautiful mirror. This obsessive thinking we had about a situation allows us, it's so emotional for us that it's a mirror right in front of our face going, where, you know, what are you trying to find in this thing in the mirror? <clears throat> because what you're trying to find in there, you find in yourself instead. Yeah. Because here's the Queen of Cups, so the Heart of Cups in this suit. Um, cups, again, are rom emotions. Um, <clears throat> with it being the, <clears throat> the heart, it's also the feminine energy. And so <clears throat> it's very much about feeling uh, love. And the Heart of Cups, or like the Queen of Cups, <clears throat> the thing that she has mastered, because she has survived from the Ace of Cups all the way through the deck up to the Queen, almost to the very end, right? And so she's realized and understood what it is that brings her um, that fulfillment, that brings her that um, awareness and that wholeness and that completeness, and that is connecting to the higher love that's there, not the physical outside world. That's what's temporary and, you know, is extra and, and doesn't really fill you. It's like an appetizer, but you get to have the meal um, by finding that within yourself. <clears throat> Again, four pentacles, you find what you need within yourself. <clears throat> the four pentacles, you know, um, <clears throat> sometimes in the cards we'll have people coming, you know, like a little tribe coming in a big city in the background. And it's about knowing, and you do this through the Heart of Cups too. You know, when you find that fulfillment, that wholeness, you realize that you have enough. And um, this whole mirror thing teaches you that um, some of the previous feelings of lack that you've had um, are because of what you were told on anything, everything you needed from the outside, and you're not getting anything from that side, so you feel very disappointed, and, and that equals lack, right? But this shows that you, when you look on the inside, um, you have everything you need inside, and you actually have some to give, <clears throat> and you don't need to look to that big city that sometimes is in the background um, to say that this is everything that you need. Oh, I need what they have, and you're like, do you? No, not really. But we're told we need that. Well, we get to question that. And what I love about the squirrel to being on the Four Pentacles card in this deck is squirrels don't put away for 10 years. You know, they're not like, I'm gathering nuts for the rest of my life and putting them on the ground now. It's like they, they go around, they have fun, they gather food and they hide it for the winter, but they don't, you know, make all these plans and make all these expectations for years and years to come. They just move about enjoying, um, you know, the spring and the summer into the fall, putting some stuff away. And sometimes they even forget where they put stuff, right? <laughs> so <clears throat> we're also going to pull a card here from these um, energy oracle cards just to see what else the creator wants you to know about this energy that's coming through this portal for you. And actually, 
um, the squirrel is really, really speaking to me for some reason. And I normally don't do this, but in this card, <clears throat> each of these um, um, characters, um, like this, this is a squirrel familiar. Um, so this says the squirrel familiar whispers to you, make room for a little extra fun. <laughs> So that is a specific message to you. Make room for a little extra fun. <laughs> and that's that. When you focus your energy on fun and laughter, that's what grows, right? Okay, what else do you want Gemini's to know about this energy coming through the Lion's Gate portal for them? Got Blossoming Abundance, card number three. I don't know, I don't see a squirrel in there. I was thinking, I bet there's a squirrel somewhere in this picture. <clears throat> but he must be hiding in the bushes because I don't see one anywhere. And let's see what message comes with this for you. <clears throat> Which, you know, definitely is all about this abundance. Um, springtime coming, feeling the fullness and the, like you don't feel like you're in winter. This, you, it's almost like you're in the dead of winter because um, you're obsessing and you just feel like you're in barren lands and this is like totally the opposite as you connect to that innerness. Yeah, this even looks like, you know, I know it's a Zen garden, but it almost looks like a barren desert and that's how you feel. Um, but your world, you know, here changes to this when you connect to that inner uh, inner um, love, that inner value, that inner worth. <clears throat> and this is increasing wealth and value. So this card shows a beautiful golden garden in the springtime with coins and new flowers blossoming all around. They even hang like fruit on the tree above. So this card signals a new increase in wealth, possibly in a dramatic and unexpected way. So be aware that you sow the seeds of your own wealth and prosperity, much like a gardener works the ground and begins to see blooming results take hold. This card upright indicates that the universe is blessing you and helping the fruits of your label to blossom. So smell the flowers and tend to the new growth. Be grateful and enjoy. So let's talk about the, the uh, essence, the smell, so that this is definitely a message of smell the roses, smell the roses, smell the flowers. And the affirmation for this is abundant wealth blossoms all around me. I see the value in my everyday life. So yeah, the focus instead of the future, I need to get that thing and I'm not going to be happy until then. This brings you back to that. You have everything you need right now and brings you back to this moment instead. You're not dragged into the past or to the future where, you know, if you put your fulfillment in the future, it never comes. Because when you get to that point, you won't be um, gra grateful in that moment because that moment becomes this moment and you'll still be looking for the future for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So this is very much about coming back and, and looking into what you have now. <clears throat> We're also gonna pull some additional cards here. See what else the creator wants you to know about this energy. All right, creator, what else for Gemini is for this energy? We've got the Eight of Pentacles. So um, the Eight of Pentacles, like the beaver, is all about doing the work. Keep doing the job. You're um, having success. Things are unfolding. Just keep at it. Just keep going. Um, um, and it's not really a don't give up card because you're just so enjoying your life and the moments and the work and the things that you're doing and the moments that you're having that you just have this natural abundance that happens because an abundance can mean a variety of things, of course. Um, it can mean financial, but a lot of times this obsessiveness, whatever you've been searching for, you find within yourself and within your moments 
Um, and you know, with that self-reflection we talked about with getting out into nature, you really understand um, what it is that you've been looking for. Um, and so I love that for you there. Yeah. Because here's the Ten of Swords. All those expectations we were talking about, all those things that you're trying to have come true, all this obsession that you're having, the obsession of thinking, because the swords are all about thinking, are just exhausting. This little, little rat, he's not dead. He's just exhausted. And so you're ready to really look at um, and be released from all that because you're tired. You're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you're exhausted around this obsessiveness. So you're ready to let go. Yeah. Because you got the two of wands here. So you got all this new energy we talked about with this um, page of wands. Um, well, that new energy coming in the next phase here is that you um, start making new plans um, for going forward. You kind of sometimes you can look at the number two like you know two like the Roman number two looks like the pause um, pause key you know on something it's like those two it's like pause so this is like taking a pause and plan and reevaluate what you're wanting in life and restructure what direction you want to head in and that's what's going to be happening with this um, change of energy that's coming in for you here yeah because here you got the six of pentacles and six of pentacles is about giving and receiving um so and it's kind of like this switch to it's almost for me um it's like the codependent codependency card it's the awareness of codependency the healing of codependency because in a regular relationship it's equal equal you know they're each giving to each other and receiving from each other and that's usually what a healthy healthier type relationship is but we come here to experience what happens when um, you know this is the enabler in a relationship they um, or, or this one here if you know feels the need to be needed um, and I cannot accept anything from you I must give to you and it's and it becomes this parent-child type of relationship instead of an equal partner relationship this is the only one that can give I know I can't receive from you. I must become your life so that you can't live without me and I feel safe and secure. And um, you get, you know, this person will give in and say, okay, well, if you need me to, you know, um, exist off of your energy, then I will do that for you. <laughs> and they start to do that and they continue to do it and they continue to do it until this, you know, enabler no longer has anything left to give. They feel exhausted, right? And then they become bitter and resentful for this person that they're taking from them. <clears throat> and then in this part, this person's role, which this I'm, a, you know, I admit, hey, everyone, I'm Brother Zen and I'm a recovering enabler in codependent relationships. This was me. And that's how I learned so much about it. I never thought about how this person felt in my relationships, but they, how ugly that must feel, right? when um, I don't allow them to give to me, you can only receive from me, then th that joy you have when you're giving, they don't get to feel that f um, f from them to you. So what do they do to feel better about themselves? Swim, swim, swim outside the relationship, and they will focus in on things that will make them feel good about themselves. And that can be, of course, an affair or with someone else, right? Um, or pouring themselves into their work or a sport or their friends or some ap outside activity where they can give and they feel like they're a giver. Um, and that's what happens. And so this awareness that comes with this obsession, this obsessive thinking, um, really, of course, has a, it's a general reading, so it can be any area of your life, but this is a huge message for those that it's a relationship that you're obsessed about. <clears throat> and then lastly, what we're going to do, I'm just going to pull a few more cards here from this Everyday Tarot just to get um, more information. What else, what else the Creator wants you to know about this ripple effect? Um, and it literally, it looks like a ripple effect, you know, across there. Oops, there you go. Ripple effect of <laughs> across the desert there of uh, this new energy that's coming in. So, what else do you want our Geminis to know? All right, 
what else for our Gemini is about this energy ripple. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Don't worry, it's good. Okay. And anything else? Yeah, I didn't think so. I think this is like the message here. <clears throat> so you have this tower um, and it's like, no, <laughs> but what's, what's great is that um, the tower moment that happens in our life is when something that no longer serves our journey is removed out of our lives. And this tower moment is the lightning strike is the awareness and it burns down the tower to make room for the new. And this is what you're surrendering. Um, what's an, a great message, the reason I kind of chuckled is I love the tower because there's this message around it that, you know, w before we come down here as um, souls, when we're up there, um, you know, getting ready to come down, we meet with the creator um, and all our support group that's going to be around us, helping our lives to unfold the way we want it to, to learn and to grow and experience what we want. So we determine our death and our death date, and we're going to have our death, dramatic death scene, where this character or avatar we're playing in this, you know, movie or this game. Um, that's when this character ends, but our actor will continue on forever and ever for new adventures, right? Um, but when we're up there, we also determine events that we want to experience while we're here. We still have the free will of being these human beings um, where whatever happens, we still have the choice. Are we going to choose something of extreme fear or something of extreme unconditional love or something in between? And that flexibility is our free will on what we, what story we put to whatever comes to us during our life. So when events are happening, everything's happening for us, um, requested by us, and we get to determine how it influences our journey uh, and our adventure here. This tower is that, let's say, I want this event to happen in my life where, you know, in this case, it's this obsessive thinking. I want to experience this obsessive thinking and all these feelings and raw emotions that will happen from it. But here is when I need that to end because there's new things I want to experience. And I have to, uh, I need this particular situation to end so I can go on to those. So this is like the last possible date that that, that can happen. Well, I get um, also messages before that um, saying, hey, it's time to let go of this. Okay, I hear you. It gets louder. Hey, there's something that you need to uh, let go of for you to experience what you want. Okay, I hear you. There's, it gets louder and louder. To, well, finally, if we don't jump out of the tower before this happens, that's when the lightning strikes and burns it down. So the tower here is just a message of that. Just know everything that's happening in life is happening for you requested by you you can look at it from a wholly different perspective you know like that hanged man from saying things from that higher point of view understanding that um it is all happening for you not happening to you and if a tower moment comes where someone is removed out of your life or some you know job is removed out of your life or some home is moved out of whatever is moved out of your life that you're obsessive about <clears throat> it just means that you um, it was the time for the tower moment. It's like, oh, it was time for it to go for your benefit. Um, and you probably had messages before to do that, but you opted out of them. And there's nothing wrong with that because you wanted more of that experience up until that last possible moment. So it's a beautiful message. You know, that's why I love the tower. I used to see it and go, oh my God, there's quick change, massive change. And you hear all that. And it's like, no, when we look at the higher understanding of life, it's just such a, an amazing, comforting message. You know, my life is not an out of control drama train about to, you know, fly off the railroad tracks. It's a very planned uh, trip on this very secure train that cannot jump the tracks, you know. Um, so I love this energy that's coming in for you. You know, reminder, this is just part one of what's coming up with this energy um, because I'll be doing part two <clears throat> um, and these readings will come out probably the beginning of September. 
I mean, they're going to be the fall equinox, um, you know, autumn equinox readings. And those where these are like what you're ready to surrender, those are what's falling away because fall, right? So it's what's falling away out of your life, <clears throat> making room for this new amazing things that are going to be coming. So if you haven't um, subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do that so you don't miss those videos. Hit that alarm button and you'll get notified when part two comes out. And you know, if you are enjoying these types of readings, if you give me a thumbs up, that does help me um, to know which type of uh, videos everyone enjoys. Um, and I always consult the Creator, um, and these are always inspired by the Creator anyway. Um, but it just helps um, my channel out, um, and it also um, helps me understand what people are enjoying, and um, etc. So, you know, give me a little thumbs up, a comment below if there's anything else that you would like to see. And yeah, just enjoy this amazing, amazing energy that's coming through the Lionsgate portal for you. Just know every second of every moment of every day, you are unconditionally loved by the creator of all things. And I love you too. We'll talk to you soon. Enjoy your Lionsgate portal energy. And we'll talk to you soon. You take care.